Our Collision 2018 coverage is proudly powered by Amazon Prime. Find out all the ways you can benefit from a Prime subscription and get a 30-day free trial by going to collision.live slash prime and by audiobooks.com. Get a free 30-day trial and a book to keep by going to collision.live slash audiobooks using promo code TRY70. So our first interview is here. Hi. Oh, How are you doing? <laughs> Why don't you tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is Alexander Olson. I'm the CEO of Babylon Microfarms. Uh, this was founded about two years ago as a project uh, initiated at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. Um, and it was a project oh. for refugees, and we were tasked with building low-cost hydroponic systems. So hydroponics is a means of growing crops without soil, uses 90 to 95% less water than growing outdoors. The plants grow twice as quickly, uh, no GMOs or pesticides. And it's long been heralded as the sort of next, you know, the future of agriculture is going to solve a lot of problems for us. And it's kind of... Uh, I don't know, it hasn't happened, and there's, there's been a lot of things stopping that from happening, but a lot of uh, recent innovations and technology developments have mean that it's becoming commercially viable, and so we were sort of doing this, you know, really trying to uh, create systems that are easy and, you know, can help people grow their own food, and we were like, okay, this is great, it could be something that people do, and we're building these things, growing stuff, we're like, okay, this like, I think people would do this if, if it was easy enough, and so during that process, we basically discovered how... Uh, incredibly difficult it is and, and what uh, what challenges need to be overcome to create something that's accessible to anyone and so what we've done is created an automated platform that'll grow crops for you so um, essentially yeah in a nutshell like a computer that would dose control recreate the perfect environment for each individual crop so you can basically program in recipes for different crops whether that's the nutrients the environment and recreate the conditions that are perfect for them so you get the highest quality produce all the time, completely consistent results, and that platform can power uh, a wide range of hardware applications. So we have a number of different verticals we're targeting from uh, food service, you know, restaurant industry, we have an appliance that we're releasing this year, uh, as well as some larger sort of commercial operations. So we're, I guess, uh, pushing a plug and play urban farming, I guess would be in a nutshell. Okay, wow. So what is this platform based on? So it's hardware and software where you're basically, a, we take a very data heavy approach where you have sensors monitoring everything from the CO2 concentration in the air to the temperature, uh, as well as the nutrients uh, within the water and things like that. And so we're basically analyzing that data and are able to actuate on it. So you're controlling the lights, the ventilation, the neut all of these things. So it's a it's sort of combination of hardware and software. On your computer? Uh, so yes, so it depends on what application. So we're... Uh, we actually try and keep it as uh, hands-free as possible. So I don't think people like apps as much as, they, as, as much as they say they do. Um, so the less the user has to do, the better. But um, right now, it's a sort of, I think of like a kitchen appliance, like a double-door refrigerator, that kind of size. Um, sadly, I can't, couldn't bring one with me today. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Okay. So. No, no, no. Okay, so what kind of environment is there like a greenhouse like so, yeah so think of the uh, think of it like a yeah double door refrigerator that's inside is creating an environment for crops so each individual shelf is like a little farm and so each of those shelves can be a crop whether you're you know restaurant growing some herbs rare varieties of you know, microgreens things like that but they're getting you know a lot of the, a lot of it's based around distribution where right leafy greens, herbs, things like that. Like you, you lose, I think uh, like lettuce and things loses up to 50% of its nutritional value within you know, a day of harvesting. Right. Um, and a lot of it, you know, the only determinant of quality is how fresh it is. So the restaurants, places like that, they, you know, they want, they'll have stuff shipped in every day from around the world just so their chef gets what he wants. So yeah. if you're saying, you know, harvest it from the machine onto the plate, you're not getting any higher quality than that. It's not possible. So what's the hardware behind testing these? So for us, it's about the user experience and dressing it up so it looks good. So growing crops hydroponically has been done for a while. That's not new, but creating something that is simple and uh, automated in a way that is intuitive and uh, that's that's not easy. And so we're really addressing that uh, by m creating sort of high quality aesthetic appliances. So. Uh, you know, it's not just decorative; it's functional, but it has to have that decorative uh, element to it. Which, yeah. How big is the um, the actual? Appliance? So the one we're releasing this year is uh, f uh, two, uh, four foot wide, two and a half foot deep, and about six foot tall. So it's fairly sizable, but within that is a good, uh, you know, can produce a lot of produce. Okay. 
And how um, isolated are the different compartments? Can I grow multiple crops at the same yes. time? Or? So each individual shelf can be segmented. Uh, each shelf is designed to be its own microclimate. So wow. uh, in effect, you know, a plant will need different uh, conditions through every stage of its life. For it. So a seedling needs something very different to a later stage crop. And right. basically we're doing it so you could rotate those. Um, you know, each individual shelf would be able to be yeah, rotated. Okay, so adding on to that, if I have multiple crops, mm -hmm. um, how would I like go about making sure that everything is separate? How would I go? How would I know what to do mm -hmm. with each one? So, uh, uh, I guess I've mentioned one of the key part of our business is uh, everything comes preceded. So all you do is put in, I think like a cure egg for plants. You just put in the pod. And the system will automatically register that it's in that, grow it for you essentially, and notify you when it's ready. So like I put in tomatoes. And then I s put the system, hey, these are tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. I just come yeah. back when it's done. Yeah. So we've, we've done tomatoes. They get a little unruly. They're kind of a big plant. But um, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's kind of the idea. Uh, and these seedlings, are there, like, serving sizes that come with that? or? Mm -hmm. So everything comes in uh, portion sizes. So this, this, the size of the consumables will vary slightly depending on what crop it is but uh yeah essentially it's in like a small uh you know all compostable portion size so people just pull it out you know take it to the serving counter eat, eat it you know put it on the plate and wow. throw it away how close are you guys to releasing like an actual finished product so i'd say within the next six to nine months okay six to nine months and uh wh how did this i mean i know you said that um like agriculture and everything mm -hmm. like really played a big part but how do you guys actually think of the idea and like bring it to here so as an essay, it was a project for refugees and we still keep close to that. We're working on some low cost uh, social impact projects, basically use, utilizing the same technology to see what we can do on the very you know, low end. How, like, how cheap could we make it? You know, what, what, where's the line of like, making it commercially viable and creating right. a food machine? Uh, you know, that, that's kind of, in the simplest sense, we're building these things being like, okay, hydroponics is great. It clearly could solve these problems. Uh, and uh, you know, built this little thing. The first one was like a bucket with a plant in it. It was terrible, but it, <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it worked. And um, yeah, and it was like, okay, what would it take? What like, what about food machines? And it was something along those lines of like, that would be cool. Like, I think people would be into that. And you know, here we are, two and a half years later, and it. Um, yeah, so the, I forgot what the question was, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced throughout this process? Uh, there are a lot of them. I think, at least, uh, you know, we were at college, so there's sort of risk at the very beginning wasn't there. There was sort of a, like, I, you know, I was putting in every hour I had into it, but it was also like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> if, if it didn't work at the very beginning, there was sort of a safety net because I was right. you know, still at college. But I think deciding, getting the team is very hard. Like, we have the best team in the whole world, and they're amazingly skilled and very well re rounded, but that's taken two years in of itself. Like, right. they, those, you know, a lot of like searching and to find people that really get on really work well together and and are passionate enough to work you know startups don't pay very well that's kind of how it works and mm -hmm. um but still willing to put in those sort of you know 15 hour days to uh get it done so yeah that that took a while and we've certainly had some ups and downs on the team and then convincing people to do this you know out of college when they could have you know software developers and engineers have a lot of job offers uh, on the line and we're like hey come and work for not much money uh, but it's fun <laughs> 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 do you guys have a price point set for yes, the actual so item? the appliance will retail for eight thousand dollars okay it's good it's good so you're here at collision just looking for so we networking what yeah so we were uh, on the beta startup track so we had a booth we had you know a lot of great reception i think this is a really cool conference in amazing city to have it in um, yeah, we've done a lot of networking, met with a couple of funds while we were here and, uh, nice. yeah, made some good connections. So when I like purchase this, <laughs> I mean, down the line, please, um, please do purchase. <laughs> <one>. so, <laughs> how would the setup go? So, uh, it is very much a plug and play device. It would require a water line, like a, like a, you know, like a refrigerator or another, a lot of, uh, other household appliances, but that's it. Plug it in. Uh, and then we'll just keep sending you consumables and you can. Yeah. And Probably these consumables, awesome. are they like subscription? So they can be. Uh, yeah, we try and advocate for that, especially, you know, the restaurant customers that we have now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for us if, there, if it is like that. But I know that for consumers, it'll be a little more challenging because there isn't, you know, you don't want a standing order of lettuce. That's a bit boring. Right. So, <laughs> so what, what would the price points be on like something like that? So it's about $25 per refill. So that would be okay. around a shelf's worth of, of produce. 
<laughs> and uh, weird question. Uh, will I be able to expand the uh, the shelf? Like, let's say I want to grow, mm-hmm. like, not tomatoes, but like carrots mm-hmm. or like wheat. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to need a lot more room. So, Is there yeah, so uh, I wouldn't recommend growing wheat. Well, <laughs> maybe yeah, not but wheat. <laughs> um, but the, uh, so we, we didn't. We actually released a product last year which had all the sort of adjustable, and we just found that people don't do it. Like, the just stand the more standardized we can keep it the better right. we can remotely control it and make sure it works consistently okay. um but we have some other products in the line for larger crops that, you know there's a lot of interest in certain medicinal herbs and things like that which oh, take well. up a lot of space and we're like okay well we you know have to address that interest so right. um i think in the future there'll be uh, adjustable height shelves for sure awesome and you did mention earlier that like chefs might be interested to like keep like fresh mm-hmm. produce would there be like a different version of this product for them? Yes, so as in the one we are releasing now is, is primarily targeted chefs right. and restaurants. We're actually doing a low uh, run release in the next month or so, uh, just to get that, that customer feedback. Um, I think it's, it makes a lot more sense for chefs because the need, you know, right. the quality, the freshness, all of that stuff, and and you know, we very much designed it to be a productive machine. Like while it has all this sort of aesthetic side to it, and it would be very cool in your home, uh, I think the functionality is designed for chefs. Yeah, and it's right there. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. I just right open the, the thing and then I grab it, and then yeah. now we got tomatoes. It's perfect. Yeah. I wish I could have bought one with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's massive, though. I yeah, it's kind of it's difficult. To but if someone <laughs> wanted to view this or learn more about yeah. it or wanted to purchase one. Yeah. So uh, our website's www.babylonmicrofarms.com. Uh, we are currently taking pre-orders now, uh, so please send us an email and we will get back to you. Um, yeah, so we're taking pre-orders now. Have some great uh, discounts available for those early adopters and people who really want to get you know test out and get involved. So, yeah, please check us out and follow us on social media. That is awesome. Thank you so much for cool. even coming here and, and sharing this with us. Yeah, no, that's great. really cool. Yeah. Thank you so All much. Right, thank you very thank much, you. guys. Pleasure. Thank you. And have All a right. really great collision. We'll do. Thanks.